Hi, I'm Dave Van Oss, Agriculture Markets Manager for Libro Credit Union. Libro is very excited to be this year's presenting sponsor for the Virtual Outdoor Farm Show. We truly hope that your farm business finds great value with this upcoming session. I'm John Grang, editor of Farm Terrio. Surveys repeatedly tell us that public trust of farmers is as high as any other group in society. This hasn't stopped the sector from worrying about its public image after high profile hits by activists and, and other such groups. How much time or investment should farmers put into maintaining public trust? Are there ways to build public trust when it feels like people are against you? In this session, we're gonna talk about public trust in agriculture. And joining us today are John Jameson, the CEO of the Canadian Centre for Food Integrity, and Keith Curry, President of the Ontario Federation of Agriculture and Vice President of the Canadian Federation of Agriculture. Welcome, John and Keith. Thanks, Morning. John. So when we talk about public trust uh, in agriculture, what, what do we mean? It's kind of, a, kind of a, a, a bulbous term. I think what we mean, John, is, is having the Canadian public and people around the world, because we do export a lot of our Canadian products, having a a sense of well-being about the way we produce our food. And it's uh, having trust, and, and that's an important word, having trust in the production practices and, and indeed in the whole food system and how it ends up from being produced on the farm, being on the plate of Canadians. And, uh, and it's, really, it's really important as we you know, move to you know, more modern uh, ways of producing our food of, of uh, you know, building markets and, and uh, talking about sustainability. And tell us, where are we at as far as public trust in agriculture? What, what's the trend? I know your organization studies that, uh, John. I think we're, uh, we're doing a better job of, of building tr public trust than we have in the past. And I think it's because the industry, you know, the whole food system has realized that uh, they need to do a better job of connecting with consumers. And I think the farm community has taken, has taken a very strong lead in this uh, with some of the work by organizations like the Public Trust for Steering Committee and, and some of the work the CFA and, and other organizations have done. So I think, I think the realization that public trust is an important issue is not a, not a long term. It, it, it's been around for a few years, but not a long time. And I think we're doing a much better job of working together to connect with consumers and build that public trust. And Keith, from a farmer perspective, how do you think farmers see uh, how we're doing as far as public trust? Well, by nature, farmers are very proud of what they do. And, and I, I think what is disturbing for farmers is the fact that someone might challenge what they're doing and, and the way they do it. And there's a real sense of pride in, in producing the products that we do uh, right across this country. And, and uh, you know, the fact that it's challenged is, is, is something that they take personally. And so, you know, we've seen for years a uh, number of studies done that, that show that the public generally has a high, high trust level of farming, but we're starting to get into, you know, a, a movement almost where people trust farmers, but they don't necessarily trust what we do. And even though that doesn't make a lot of sense, it is reality that, that you know, certainly social media has opened up a lot of conversations and opportunities for some potential negativity, but it also opens up opportunities for uh, that, that connection that we have or need to have with the public. And, and I think how we, how we take that data from surveys that we've been doing about what the public thinks about our production uh, techniques and styles and methods is really key to how we have that conversation going forward with the public for sure. And you mentioned some of this, the new avenues for discussion in social media, which are positive and significantly negative at times. I, you know, farmers, after they've seen some of these you know, pretty trying, pa pretty painful uh, you know, characterizations of what they do, uh, what do you think the appetite is for farmers to try to be active in, an, in increasing public trust when, when they, you know, you feel the harder hits more than you do the, the, the positive messages? Well, as humans, we take everything personally, right? And, and what we really need to understand is, is the negativity that we might see in media and or on social media in particular, 
what is that in the big picture? What is that in the percentage of, of where people are as far as what they think about uh, agriculture in particular and, and farmers and food production? And, you know, when you look at, I'll say my generation, you know, I'm quite comfortable on social media because of the roles that I've had over the last number of years and I've had to be engaged. But most people, my generation, uh, you know, they may have a smartphone, but may not be necessarily comfortable on social media. But when I look at my kids generation, you know, the smartphone is almost like a third arm when they've grown up with it, they're used to it. So they're much more comfortable in having those conversations through social media platforms. And we have lots of great examples out there of young farmers that are portraying their farming operations and their families and how they're engaged in that. And I think those are the those are the people that we need to lean on and, and to really uh, provide more tools for so that they can continue that trend. Of, of having those conversations online and you know it doesn't matter what sector of society and you're going to get negativity from somebody but what we need to do is just keep you know using organizations like John's where we we, we grab their tools and, and we use them to promote the business of agriculture and, and really you know for us it's not so much a business in a lot of cases it's a lifestyle almost and, and how we engage our families and our communities within our businesses to create that that rural type of lifestyle and and so i think there's a there's a whole generation now that can really really help us in in touching that consumer and and then on, on the on the organizational side take the information that that we have out there and then you know let's not have farmers talk to the consumer even though they, they want to see that that story behind the face. And the reason why I made that comment is farmers don't always need know how to communicate. Now, some of the younger farmers that I just talked about are, are better at it, but let's use that information to talk to consumers in their language so that they understand what it is that we're talking about and, and have a better feeling for the whole business of agriculture. And uh, John, that, uh, that language is an interesting point, Keith. Uh, John, how, how, how much of a disconnect is there in language and, and what sort of things can, can be done to try to, you know, when, when it's basically just language that's the, the, the issue. Keith made some really good points there. And I think the key one is being, uh, you know, being transparent about what we do. The other thing is uh, we know from some of the survey work that the Canadian Center for Food Integrity does is that, you know, roughly 90% of Canadians have very little knowledge about modern food production. So we have, as an industry, we have to think about how do we put ourselves in the shoes of the consumer who knows little about our modern production practices and has a concept of, you know, probably a 1940 or 1950s model of, of food production. But how do we put ourselves in those in their shoes so that we can explain what we do in terms that resonate and connect with the consumer? And when we talk about the activists and the, you know, the small percentage of people that are that are opposed to what we do, they do a very good job of connecting on an emotional level with the consumer. And we as an industry also have to think about how do we connect on an emotional level with the people that are purchasing our, our product. And oftentimes what, what we resort to is talking about, you know, science and technology in fairly deep terms that don't necessarily connect with the consumer. So I think we have to tell some of the stories behind the people in the industry and, and, and use terms that, you know, that still evoke that we have a very strong food system, but that's based on science and technology, but maybe not get too technical. And, and that's, that's a really difficult, it sounds easy, but it's not. And, and again, the challenge is how do we put ourselves in the shoes of the consumer and explain what we do in a, in a way that resonates and connects with them. And like I said, it's, it's a bit of work and it's, it's really telling the story behind people like Keith and, and some of the, the farmers and the, and the, you know, the truckers and the wholesalers and the whole food system in a way that, that makes that emotional connection. And some of those examples of the, of the, uh, the food system are, are people whose stories you're trying to tell in, in a new Canadian Center for Food Integrity uh, campaign. Uh, that's a, a new step for the CCFI to, to, to actually create uh, some content like that. Why, why did uh, the CCFI decide that this was the, the time for you to do that? Yeah, well, when I come on, uh, I come on a little over a year ago as uh, CEO of the CCFI. And, and of course, during that time, we had a look at, you know, what we do and, and we reviewed our strategic plan. And during that v review, we decided that, you know what, we, we can, uh, look at uh, connecting 
and communicating directly with the consumer. So we, you know, we're in early steps of a campaign that uh, we hope will, will evoke that emotional response to what we do and also let Canadians know that the food system is a number of interconnected pieces that work very well together. You know, so it's the, the person that's providing the inputs to the farmer. It's the farmer. It's a, it's a trucker. It's the wholesaler. You know, it's the retailer. And everyone tends to work together to, to move that food along the line and that we have very strong regulations and rules and, and protocols that, that are very safe. So, again, it's a, it's a complicated message, but what we're going to try and do over time is, is build that emotional and, and responsive connection that allows the consumer to, to understand what the people behind the food system are doing. And by, by using storytelling, we hope to get into a, into a period where we are informing and educating the consumer and, and also getting feedback on, on what we do. So it's, uh, we're early stages, but uh, you know, this is something that we wanted to take on and, uh, and again, add to the multitude of voices that are out there that are doing a very good job of connecting with consumers. Well, let's take a look at a couple of those uh, pieces from this new CCFI campaign. My name is Neil. I've been delivering feed to farms across Ontario for 40 years. I'm proud to serve multiple generations of hardworking farm families. They put their heart into producing food for our tables. Thanks to the farmers for all you do. It's all good, Canada. Hi, I'm Chris. I'm Josiah. Our family has been farming here in the Niagara region of Ontario for six generations. That's nearly a hundred years of growing food for Canada. We raise pullets and house the mature laying hens for fresh local Ontario eggs. We also have vineyards here on the 20 bench in Niagara for Ontario wines. Through quality assurance programs, we all follow the same high standards for food safety, animal care, environmental sustainability, food affordability, and worker safety. All of those are top priorities for farmers across Canada. We are proud to produce safe, affordable, healthy food for Canadians. Our fresh laid eggs go from our farm to the grocery store shelves in only four to seven days. When you buy a bottle of EQA wine, you are buying wine made from 100% Ontario grown grapes from our local vineyards. Likewise, when you buy Canadian eggs in the grocery store, you can have confidence that those fresh eggs come from our local farms. Real farmers? Real eggs. It's, it's good, good Canada. Canada. So uh, we, you can see in those pieces, John, how the, uh, the, the points that you made, the, the, the direction you're trying to get to, what, what's the breadth of the campaign? You said this is the first step. What, what more are you planning on doing? So the, the early stages of the campaign is simply giving people an idea of who the players are behind the food system. And as we, as we move forward, and we're actually almost into stage two, where we get into some deeper messaging around things like science and technology, uh, climate change and environment, jobs in the economy, and help the people in the food system tell the story of, for example, how important agriculture and food is to the Canadian economy. In particular, as we're rebuilding our economy out of COVID, the opportunity for agriculture and food to really lead the, the you know, the reestablishment of, of the, Canadian, um, the Canadian economy. And then to take pieces like uh, what farmers do in terms of, of mitigating climate change and telling that in a story that, that evokes that response, but also allows the consumer to understand the, the efforts farmers and, and the food system take you know, are significant, but they're also based on, on some real hard data and science. And, and uh, so as we move forward, it's not a short-term campaign. We plan to run this over a number of years. And we plan to work with partners in the food system, again, to tell that deeper story. And there, there are other uh, projects in the, in the industry similar, similar to this, such as the, the Guardians of the Grassland film, which is a, a high-end film, which you know, really tries to tell the emotional story of, of how uh, beef farmers engage with, uh, with the land and with their animals. And it's, it's, been, it's been well received. And, uh, and I invite viewers to uh, look uh, through the Canadian Digital, Canada's Digital Farm Show program, because there, there is a session that's, uh, that's going to show the Guardians of the Grassland film. 
Uh, Keith, what, um, what, so if we're trying to start to tell this emotional story, uh, how involved should producers be in, in trying, to, um, trying to promote that, uh, that emotional side of the story? Oh, I think we have to be very involved, and, and especially from the standpoint that we are the face that's going to be behind or in front of the story, I guess, not behind it. And, and I think it, it's important that we, uh, you know, for the most part, I, farmers that I know are not opposed to opening up their doors to the general public, unless there's a food safety or an animal safety or some kind of safety issue. Um, they're more than welcoming to to talk to people about their operation, how they produce, what they produce, and and where possible, let's take a tour, you know, and let, let's 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 see what what's behind the scenes, and and that's what people appreciate the story behind the food that they're buying, and I think even through you know when you look at at COVID nineteen, that those opportunities have been even greater with what's happened with the the local movement that's been increased. Through COVID, people are looking. People are looking to their their communities for their food supply, and and it's been a great opportunity for farmers to engage the general public. And so, we need to take lessons from that and, and move it forward in the broader picture of of social engagement with our consumers and how we, we how we tell that story and and how we reassure people that not only are you getting high quality product, but you're also getting really an affordable product. And that, that's true. There seems to be a more emotional connection with food since the start of the pandemic. Uh, John, do you have any thoughts on, on what that could mean as far as uh, your trust in the, in the system going forward? Well, we're actually, our organization is in field right now doing a survey of Canadians around their opinions on the food system. And I've seen some data that have come out of a few provinces that actually indicate that Canadians seem to, to have a much higher comfort level with, with the people who are producing our food and putting it on our table than we may have had a couple of years ago. And I think it's because of that recognition during COVID that the food system, you know, had to adapt and change, but by and large, the, the, the food continued to flow, you know, not without significant challenges, but because people were home and they were thinking about cooking in their home, there's a higher level of, of interest in the food system. And I think there's an opportunity there for, for the food system to leverage that, that interest. I also think that the openness and awareness of the messaging from the food system to the consumer is also at an all time high. So a couple of things we're seeing, again, uh, the data seems to think that Canadians are more accepting of uh, the production methods in our country and they should be. You know, a couple of years ago, Canada and Ireland were ranked as the best uh, food systems in the world, and that level of incre- interest, I think, is is at a it's at a higher level than we've ever seen before, and it's a great opportunity for us to connect with consumers. And then back to your campaign, what what's the reaction been uh, so far uh, to your campaign? Uh, we're tracking it on uh, social social media and other ways. We've touched, I can't remember now, but it was over a million people so far, and we also. Uh, we also track the sediment, and which has been very positive. And it seems to be the majority of audience that we're connecting with are, you know, the female in the late 20s to early 40s, which is a good, good audience for, uh, for Canadian uh, food producers to connect with, uh, mostly urban people. So, you know, it, it, uh, it'll, it'll take time to build that, uh, the connection. But early days seem, you know, seem fairly well. And I think, it, again, it's because people are interested in how their food is produced, but probably at a higher level than ever before. And, and some of the content is, is fairly engaging and visual. So there's a oppor- good opportunity there. We have uh, uh, had quite a few things that have changed how, how, how people interact with, with the concept of public trust. You know, there, there's social media, there's the pandemic. Where, where, are, we, where are we going in, into the future uh, you know, I, I've been watching this for a number of years now, you know, farmer engagement and then some farmers have pulled back from their engagement and some farmers re-engaged. Um, where, where, where do you think we're, we're going to be in, in five years on, on public trust from the sector? I think what I'm, what I'm seeing, and, and let, um, Keith can speak to this too, I think there's much more unity in the food system. And I think there's a, there's a willingness of the industry to begin to speak with one voice on 
on key topic areas such as jobs in the economy or science and technology. So I think the increased interest plus the fact that the industry is starting, starting to speak more and more with one voice puts us in a really good position. Yeah, if I can just jump in on there, John. Uh, John's absolutely right uh, what he's talking about, the unity part. You know, we COVID has really highlighted the fact that we cannot stand alone as individual uh, portions of the of the the food value chain. We all need to be successful for each other to be successful. And I think, you know, we've always had conversations with our our partners beyond the farm gate as 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 farm organizations. But we had we've had even more so in the last number of months, and it's really highlighted the need for us to be collaborative going forward. And you know, uh, CFA is just the Canadian Federation of Agriculture has uh, been engaged on a campaign as well through this, uh, trying to seek more support from government. Not, not, not a check in the mailbox, but, but government support in general for the agri-food system in Canada, because we not only understand now how important it is uh, for Canadians to get through COVID, but it really is, is poised to be that economic driver coming out of COVID uh, for the country. So we've been engaged in a, in a campaign called Food for Thought that has really targeted, much like John's campaign, a more specific urban and suburban uh, large market audiences and the response has been tremendous way more than we even expected it's been really good so you know the phase two of that will move into more of a public trust type of type of uh, phase but it's it's again getting the message out that not only do we produce food but there are multiple benefits of the way we produce food now uh, that enhance things like the environment certainly climate change if you look at the last election was a big topic matter and it's on everybody's mind and when we, you know, we tend to think of climate change and soil sequestration, soil carbon sequestration as the keys. But when we farm, um, if we're sequestering soil or sequestering carbon in the soil, there's other co-benefits to it. There's nutrient retention. There's a huge soil health issue that that a positive soil health issue that comes with that. There's a lot of good co-environmental benefits that, you know, the public appreciates and understands. So. You know, what we used to call as environmental goods and services is starting to move into an environmental social governance uh, type of model now where, you know, our end buyers are wanting to see how we produce what we produce. And that goes hand in hand with public trust uh, messaging as well. And I think I think we can use our retailers, for example, that are buying our products to to promote the practices that we're doing and the people behind it. And, And I think that's a positive for the industry, too. And back to your point, John, about the uh some more coming together of the sector. There's been some interesting things happening during the pandemic. You can think of a grassroots hog farmer organization that uh, you know created a mechanism to bring food, you know, bring food to processing plant workers to thank them. Uh, you, I think there's you know maybe some more appreciation uh, not just uh, from the public but maybe within the sector of the values of the different parts of the sector. You know the farm community and, and Keith knows this better than I do have really stepped up during COVID-19 and, you know, they're there for a while. It was almost every day an organization was announcing a donation to a food bank or appreciation for people working in a plant. It, it really speaks to the level of care and, and concern that the farm community have for the people of Canada. And I think it also adds to that connection building that, uh, that we do, but uh, I don't, I'm not sure if we realize uh, how robust and how important our food system is in Canada. And, and one thing that COVID-19 has done is focused a light on that and shined a light on how well our food system can work. Granted, there's been all kinds of challenges, but the adaptations have been made to keep food on the table. So, you know, when the pandemic started and you had a line up at a grocery store and the experience was a whole lot different than it has in the past, but by and large, the food continued to flow. And I think Canadians recognize that the, the farmers and the people they work with had to pivot, had to make changes, had to endure some fairly substantial uh, additional costs to that, but were able to keep things flowing. And, and that recognition, I think, is a great opportunity to build, build on that and, and to continue our path toward, toward building that trust with the consumer. Even some of the the challenging parts uh, during COVID, whether that's the you know, challenges with you know, the foreign worker supply and then health, uh, uh, it, it's an opportunity for discussion uh, in the in the long term. Yeah, because when you think about forward availability and our food availability and uh, 
Oh, the word, the word I'm looking for is, is affordability too. Those are a couple of things that food security. Yeah. The things that the Canadians see as, as important and, you know, they were there, they were there in our country during a, you know, a pretty difficult time. Well, do either of you have any other, uh, any other comments on this uh, topic? Something we haven't, uh, haven't touched on? Well, I, I just like to, to jump in and, and add to what John just said about, uh, you know, where the public is, uh, the understanding of, of our food supply and, and being appreciative of the fact that the food kept coming. And, you know, everybody w- walked into their store at some point in time in the last five months and, and the shelves were not empty. However, there might have been a product that they normally buy not there mm-hmm. or the price of it had increased because of the supply issue or whatever. And it made them think, you know what, we are fortunate to have this robust system, but we also need to voice our opinion that we need to do whatever we have to, to maintain that, that system in, in place. And I think that's, that's been a positive for the farm community to understand that the public realizes that we are a key cog in that food system. So let's make sure we maintain that robust system in place so that food security from a supply issue never becomes an issue. So I think that's been a positive too. Well, thank you both uh, very much for taking time uh, to talk to us today. Thanks, uh, you know, Keith, for uh, you know, uh, coming out of your, your, your flower field to, uh, to, to help us out today. And, uh, and John, I know you're on holidays. Thank you uh, for taking the time too. Thanks, John. Appreciate it, John. Thanks. Thank you.